In this video, I'm going to be discussing the fundamentals of engineering exam, and specifically, I'm going to be working with the chemical engineering exam. And so the very first question to ask yourself before you take or begin studying for the FE is whether or not you should take it. And um, the answer to that question is, if you intend to go into an engineering field for work in your career, and you have gone to an ABET, A-B-E-T, accredited university and have graduated that university with a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering uh, for this uh, situation, um, then you would take the FE chemical exam. And once you pass the FE chemical exam, you would submit your scores to the state that you live in, such as California, and California will issue you a license number indicating that you are now officially uh, board certified as an engineer in training, an EIT. And so with your EIT degree, if you are still interested in uh, becoming a practicing engineer, you would work in an engineering role for five years and afterwards you would take an additional exam, the PE exam, which after you pass that, you would now become certified as an official PE, practicing engineer. And uh, a, a note that I would like to make uh, from my own experience with this, uh, having uh, EIT or PE certification is very useful if you are interested in doing consulting work, which means uh, you're not necessarily a full-time employee with a company you haven't committed entirely to one company, but you're more of a contractor doing jobs on the side, such as designing uh, processes for some client. Uh, having an EIT or a PE license really helps tell employers and clients that you have a very good understanding of the material and the processes involved. Now, an important thing to note here is the prerequisites or the requirements of taking the FE exam. Anybody can take the FE exam and pass it, but if you have not gone to an ABET certified university, you're going to be wasting your time because the requirement to get licensed as a EIT or a PE is that you go to an ABET certified university and graduate and have that diploma in your hand from that ABET certified uh, program. And then in addition to that, a final note that I would like to make here uh, is that before you really dive too deep into studying for the uh, FE exam to become an EIT, look up the list of NCEES, which is the uh, people behind the FE exam, and find what the list is of supported or allowed calculators. So you're going to go to a Pearson View Learning Center to actually take the test and they have very specific requirements in terms of which calculators you can and can't use and uh, it is very likely that you might not have uh, a an allowed calculator and in which case you're going to want to purchase uh, a, an allowed calculator and then get very familiar using it so you're comfortable on test day. The actual test is, I think, about six hours uh, long, so it is a very long exam and you're going to want to make sure that you eat right and you sleep light right on test day um, and you stay focused and you just practice, keep practicing all these questions. And so the goal of this series of videos is going to be for me to uh, work through some example problems um, that have been kind of reworked, uh, reworded. Um, problems from the NCEES, which is the official uh, people behind this, uh, their practice exam. And together we will uh, make sure that we have a good understanding of the material so that you can do really well on this test and pass if you are interested in becoming an EIT and you really want to go down <laughs> the path of being an engineer in practice. And so I think it's really cool stuff. I hope this is helpful for you guys and thanks for watching.